around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Grace and Mr. Duggan, all them men down there by the depot. That's yeah, quite a crowd. Well, what's so curious about a wagon load of buffalo hides, I wonder? Well, maybe they got a wide one, Chester. And they sure must have something mighty interesting. Yeah. Is this your wagon, mister? No. Gatlers. I skinned for them. Well, what's the crowd for? Just curious. The other skinner got hurt, and we brung them into the dock. Oh, what happened? Did they hurt bad? Bad enough Gatliff didn't see no sense in bringing him into town at all. Me and the cook, we made him, though. Here comes Gatliff now. Uh, Chester, yes, sir? go up to docks and see what you can find out. Huh? All right, sir. How is it, Gatliff? The doc will take care of everything, Tobe. Well, never mind that. How is he? He's dead. Well, let's drive these hides on down to the shed. Come on. Just a minute, Gatliff. Some other time, Marshal. I'm busy. So am I, but I want to talk to you anyway. You and the cook go get them hides unloaded, Tob. I'll be right along. Yeah. All right, what do you want, Marshal? What happened to your Skinner? Billy? He hurt himself, that's all. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah, he's dead. Look, Gatliff, anything you don't want to tell me, I can ask Doc. Well, there's about. nothing to tell, Marshal. He got hurt and he died, that's all. When did he get hurt? Last night. Then why didn't you bring him in last night? Them other fellers, the cook and told, they figured he was done for anyway. They didn't want to bother her yet. Well, what happened to him? How did he get hurt? I don't rightly know, Marshal. He was alone in camp. We got there, he'd, he'd gone and burned himself. Burned? Well, what? Hot lead, Marshal. Spilt it all over him. He was cooking up lead in a fry pan. That was one of his chores, making my bullets. Always was a mite clumsy, so he... Messed herself up this time. Must have been a lot of lead. Fifty, sixty pound, I reckon. Mr. Gatlin, that man of yours, Doc, fell through with him. He says you can bury him now. Oh, no, I ain't gonna pay for no burial. He's just a skinner I hired. I don't even know his last name. You're his boss, aren't you? You brought He's him just in. Just a bum that worked for me. Well, well I mean... All right, hold it, Chester. Well, I... Okay, Catliff, we'll take care of it. Caused me trouble enough. I don't want to hear no more about it. Chester, what about the Skinner? Tell me. Oh, it was just terrible, Mr. Dillon. Doc says he don't know how he lived as long as he did. Did he talk to Doc? Oh, my, no. Poor fellow. How do you suppose it happened? Poor heart lead. Had a whole pan full of it, they told me. Yeah, but what man's going to pick up 50 or 60 pounds of molten lead and spill it all over him? Well, I... I didn't think of that. Of course, there's another way it could have happened. How? Somebody could have pushed him down into it. Oh, my goodness. Well, who? I don't know. Gatliff or maybe a Skinner Tobe. I wonder where Tobe went. Him and the cook probably went over to the Long Branch to drink up their wages. All right. Uh, trust him. Yes, sir. Go do something about burying that night, will you? Yes, sir, I will. How are you, Tobe? Oh. 
Marshal. Sam, set out a bottle of rye and another glass, will you? Sure, Marshal. Buy you a drink, Tub. You will? Well, sure, Marshal, sure. There you are. Well, Tub, here's to your friend, Billy. Well, he weren't no friend of mine. But he died a bad death. I'll, I'll drink to him. Tell me something, Tub. How did Billy and Gatliff get on? You noticed Gatliff's eyes, Marshal. Yeah, I did. He's got powder specks shot into him. They look like turkey eggs. Yeah, I know. Now, you don't get on with a man like that. How come I never seen him in Dodge before? That man's greedy, Marshal. He's downright wicked about money. He figures he can save time and make more money by selling his hides to buyer's agents on the prairie. He gets less out there, but he can kill and sell more that way. Well, he came in with a load of hides today. Well, that's just because we made him come in with Billy. Now, tell me about the accident, Tub. Well, Billy was melting lead in a fry pan. The way I figured it. He must have tripped somehow and fallen smack into it. When we rode in, we found him rolling around on the ground. That's all I know. When who rode in? Well, me and the cook. The cook skins on days Billy's making bullets. And where was Gatliff? Oh, he went in just ahead of us. Oh? How long ahead of you? Maybe 20 minutes. Then he found Billy first, is that it? Yeah, I guess he did now, I hadn't thought of that before, Marshal. So that's why you've been asking so many questions. Well, I wasn't sure, Tob, but I expect you're telling the truth. The cook told the same story. So that's what happened. Gatliff killed him. Why, well, he murdered him. Well, that's what it looks like. But I haven't got enough to prove it. He killed Billy so he wouldn't have to pay him his wages due. Well, you see, we've been out four months. He must have owed Billy three, four hundred dollars. Yeah. You going back out on the prairie with him? I ain't afraid of him. He'll sure be sleeping with one eye open from now on. And if you let on your suspicions, he'll sure try to kill you. Not me. He can just do his killing on somebody else. You'll be leaving in the morning, I suppose, huh? About dawn, I reckon. As soon as Gatliff hires a new skinner. Yeah. Well... The bottle's yours, Tope. Thank good luck. I sure do thank you, Marshal. Later in the day, Chester and a couple of other men buried Billy out on the hill. As Tobe said, he died a bad death, and it was made worse by the man who had done it to him, going scot-free. But there was nothing I could do, and I tried to forget about it. They left Dodge next morning, and things were peaceful enough for a few hours until word came that there'd been a knifing in a nester camp over across the river. We rode over to see what it was about. He was knifed in the back, Matt. That's all I know. Yeah, and nobody saw it happen. This looks like somebody got clean away with murder. Yes, it is. Well, look here. The... Why, Yorkie. Uh, Marshal? Chester? Oh, what are you doing over here, Yorkie? I come looking for berries, and I seen it. Oh, what do you mean? I seen that man get stabbed. You did? I heard him arguing, and I sneaked up just after he'd done it. They're all of them. Well, who did it, Yorkie? Did you recognize him? No, I never saw him before. Oh, what did he look like? Oh, he, he was big, dirty looking. He had a buckskin shirt. Anything else? Well, he had funny eyes, Marshal. He had spots in them. What you doing there? Sounds like... Yeah. How in the world could you ever sneak up close enough to see his eyes, Yorkie? I lived with the Arapahoes. Well, by golly, you did, didn't you, Sam? You know who did it, Marshal? I do now, Yorkie. I hope you catch him. I gotta get back. So long, Yorkie. Uh, 
I guess it was Gatliff, all right, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Well, seems like a dangerous sort of man to be running loose. Have I got him now, Doc? As soon as I find him. I hope so, Matt. I certainly do hope so. <laughs> Since Gatliff would figure that nobody had seen him, it wasn't likely that he'd run. And anyway, there wasn't much sense in trying to track him down in the dark, so Chester and I didn't start out till the next morning. Ordinarily, a man could ride into the prairie and disappear, but with Gatliff, it was a little different. At least we knew he'd be around the buffalo herd somewhere. But it was late afternoon before we reached good hunting grounds and almost dark when we found the first hunter's camp. Jump will be ready soon. Good. Throw some more tongue in that stew pot. All right, Mr. Mercer. If you don't like buffalo tongue, you'll go mighty hungry in this camp. Oh, thanks a lot, mister. Yeah, you're a lawman. Yeah, I'm Matt Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal. And my name's Tom Mercer. Pleased to meet you. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Mercer. How do you do? Supper will take a little longer now, and anyway, my Skinners won't be in for a while yet. Uh, how you been doing, Mercer? Oh, fair, Marshal. Fair. I killed over 100 today. Uh huh. You been here long? About a month. I'll move on in a couple of weeks. I don't know, Marshal. I think this whole southern herd's going to be clean wiped out for long. Next year, I'm going to Dakota. Too many hunters, maybe, huh? That's just it. That's it, exactly. Have you seen any in the last day or two, Mercer? Uh, just who are you looking for, Marshal? man by the name of Gatliff, a big man. A man with speckled eyes. What's he done? Well, do you know him? No, no, I don't. Nobody's come near us in over a week. Yeah, then you're not much help... Except for that stew that your cook's making. Boy, you like that. Hey, we're having dried apples, too. Ah, good. I, I swear, I pretty near could eat a buffalo raw, the entire beast. You must be part Injun. Uh, no, sir. I've seen one of them eat a whole liver raw. Got propped up against a tree and ate every bit of it and went sound asleep right there in the sun. <laughs> he was sure some sight. Where did you ever get that close to an Indian? Oh, Indians ain't always bad. No. But they're going to get real hungry when you hunters finish this herd off. That's so, Marshal. That's surely so. That's what makes them mad. Now, don't you think that's reason enough? Fellow told me a couple of weeks ago he ran into a bunch west of here. He was looking for scalps, all right. Hey, there come the Skinners. Now we can get outside of some of that stew. All of it. Don't you ever feed this man, Marshal? <laughs> Only when he works, Mercer. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> We spent the night in Tom Mercer's camp, and at dawn, just after breakfast, we said goodbye and rode on west. In the next two days, we met plenty of hunters, but we didn't find Gatliff. About noon of the third day, we cut the trail of a wagon train and figured it to be that of a hide buyer's agent who'd come out onto the prairie to do business on the spot. An hour or two later, we saw him. A long string of ox-drawn wagons piled high with buffalo hides. There was a man on horseback leading the train. We rode up to him. Oh, there. Yeah, that's quite a load you got, mister. Ten thousand so far. What are you doing way out here, Marshal? Well, I'm looking for a hunter by the name of Gatliff. Do you know him? Sure I do. He picked up a load from his rick early this morning. He in trouble? Yeah. Where is he? Straight south of here, a couple of miles. Can't tell you exactly. He moves around a lot. Well, that's close enough for us. Thanks a lot, mister. Sure, Marshal. I never did like him anyway. There's an empty rick yonder. That must be it. Yeah, but he's moved his camp. Yeah, but not far if it was just this morning. Chester. Hmm? What's that out there? Where at? That looks like a man. Come on. Well, Mr. Dillon, it's that Skinner here. Yeah. Get some water, will you? Yes, I will. Tobe. Hey, Tobe. Can you hear me? Tobe? He's been shot, Chester. Yeah. Here's the water. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tobe. 
Stub, it's Marshal Dullum. Give me a drink. Here. He shot me, Marshal. Oh, what happened? Where's the rest of the crew? They ran off. They took his wagon and the horses. He went kind of crazy when he found out. That's why he shot me. So where is he now? I don't know. He shot me. And then he said he was going hunting. He's gone loco. Loco. Here, now, take, take it easy, Tom. Take it easy. You're going to be all right. I could hear him shooting at sharps a long time. And then he stopped. Where was he? Which way, Tobe? Off behind me there. I could hear him. Chester, you stay with him. I'm going after Gatliff. <laughs> in the direction Tobe had indicated there lay a large isolated hollow surrounded by low ridges. When I reached it, I dismounted and crawled up to where I could look down into it. There was no sign of Gatliff. But lying on the prairie floor were the bodies of countless fresh-killed buffalo. It was a strange sight. The old bulls and the cows and the little calves lying there blackening the prairie grass. I got up and I stood looking at it for a long time. And then suddenly out in the middle I thought I saw a slight movement and a second later there came the familiar boom of a sharp's 50. And I dropped behind the ridge and waited. And then Chester rode up. You found him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Tobe is dead, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Gatliff's down there in the middle of a hollow, but we can't get anywhere near him as long as he's got that sharps rifle. He's killed a small herd of buffalo in there. Now he's lying up in the center of them. He must have gone crazy, just like Tobe said. Yeah. What in the world is he shooting at now? I wish I knew, Chester. Got you doing the way he's facing them shots. Yeah. That's a signal for help, Chester. Come on. Look out, maybe it's just a trap. We'll be ready to take cover behind one of these animals, it might be. Yes, sir. Just keep your eyes open now. There he is, behind that big bull. Yeah, I see him. What you doing? He's, he's all... Yeah, there have been horses in here. Indians. Oh, my goodness. Come on. his last effort, Chester. He's dead now. Mr. Dillon, that's awful. Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. I don't know how the Indians caught Gatlin. He'd gone a little mad, and maybe that made it easy for him, but they finally got themselves a buffalo hunter. And into their unbelievably savage torture of him had gone all the hatred and desperation of a race being slowly starved and driven from their homeland. Then they'd put him there, surrounded by his own bloody slaughter, and they'd gone off with a gesture of contempt leaving his rifle and his ammunition by his side. And having seen what they did to him, I'll never know how he managed to fire even one of those shots. For all of his evil, Gatliff had died harder than any man I'd ever seen. 
Chester and I rode back to Dodge. And it was never mentioned between us again. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, Richard Beale, Harry Bartell, and Jack Moyle. Harley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week for the third of the five most popular Gunsmoke shows. It is called Word of Honor. This is the CBS Radio Network.